You know what? I got to be honest, Todd. It's it's pretty solid considering everything we've been through. I think the last two weekends of games, and I was talking with Brian about this this morning, we've given up an even strength goal in two games against Ohio State. We've given up an even strength goal against two games at Notre Dame, and we're one win, three losses. So there's lots of really good hockey being played, but there's lots of hockey being played that little mistakes and penalties were some of it over the weekend. Uh, that end up in our net, and it costs us games. So um, as far as how our players, because that's your question, are holding up, they still believe that we're a good team. They still like coming to the rink and like the opportunity that we have in front of us to go play at Michigan and the following week to play Minnesota. Um, they're excited. So that's the part for me as a coach is you want to make sure that your guys – still love coming to the rink, still love the challenges that are in front of them, and still have the confidence to believe that we can still do some positive things. And at a certain point, you worry about that psyche of the group, so it's a great question. Uh, but I will tell you um, that the worrying you do uh, when you get to the rink, you stop worrying because you see your captain, you see the guys come in, you see the energy, you see how hard they practice. Uh, and that's the most encouraging part uh, of what I see right now. And, uh, you know, again, we got games left on the schedule that are meaningful. They mean something to me. They mean something to the team. They mean something to our program. And we're going to go out and we're going to fight like crazy to try to have some results that are a little bit more exciting than they've been uh, in the last few games. Sure. Injury updates, Gorniak uh, improved but will not play this weekend. Um, Kerr, uh, same thing. He's skating, won't be available for us this weekend. Dominic Mersch uh, will be in practice today, uh, potentially will be available. I, actually, I think he will be available this weekend. Um, and then the last, that's the only ones that would be considered doubtful uh, for the weekend. But Mersch, Mersch should be able to play. And that's, you know, those are three of our captains as well. I think that part on Saturday, you know, you lose Mersh, you got Gorniak out and Carrier out already. You're losing three of your experienced captains in leadership. And, and certainly they've done a, a job that I've praised them on all year. Um, but when you miss all of them at the same time, it does have an impact on your, you know, your leadership group. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, they get three power play goals on Saturday. That's the difference in the game. They get two power play goals on Friday. That's a difference in the game. So, obviously, they are costly penalties. Um, we have two majors that, you know, we're asking our guys to play physical and play hard. Those were two hits that there happened to be some head contact between helmet and helmet that, uh, unfortunately, is a major penalty. And, um you know, so I think the majority of what you've seen the last three games uh, were situations that, um, you know, the four-on-four -four goal that Ohio State scored in the one-nothing game. Um, you know, we got to be better at and understand that that's been the difference in the games. Part of the challenges you uh, face going up to Yost Arena this weekend. Well, talented team for sure. Michigan's as talented as any team in the country. Uh, but with those challenges is opportunity. We played well in that building the last couple of years. Um, again, yesterday our meeting was about going in there and doing what we have to do this week to put ourselves in a position to win on Friday. And that's what we're going to do. I mean, it's it's fun building the play in. They're, they're obviously playing really well. Uh, they're obviously an elite team in the country. and. You know, every team in, in our conference this year seems that they're, they're on a roll when we play them, and there's, this is no different than, than Michigan. Tony, you, you split with them the first time here. Um, do you draw anything from the first game that you won 6-3, to three, I think it was? Well, I think the guys should feel that how we played that week on the second game was 2-2 two to two with five minutes to go in the game. We gave them a shorthanded goal, so again, We've been in positions uh, in the majority of our games to win. And 
the bottom line is at this point of the season, he, we have to, you know, we have to be able to be um, sharper in the situations that sometimes don't seem to be big moments of games. You, you know, you go on a power play with five minutes to go in a game or six minutes to go a game, and, and you're tied. You think you're in a really good position, and you give up a shorty. It costs you a game. And we've cost ourselves some games with some some sloppy timing of bad decisions or bad plays or bad penalties. And um, you know the good thing is, though, you said we played Michigan two two great games in this building, and we know we're capable of doing the same this weekend. And that's what we're going to go to try to do. Um, one of your uh, you know crews has been pretty consistent, you know, as far as getting points. Uh, you know, for this team. And I guess I'm just wondering, what do you see has kind of been, you know, key to his consistency and him being able to, while others maybe have struggled, he's kind of been able to regularly yeah, produce. Yeah, Cruz is having a, a really strong uh, offensive year, uh, especially as a freshman. Uh, but he's a very confident kid. Um, I think that, you know, his play can, he continues to gain confidence in his play and he's starting to learn the league a little bit better. Uh, so I think that, uh, you know, that's been a very uh, consistent player for us to be able to produce uh, throughout the year. So it's been, you know, I think that the thing that we're looking now is to have a couple guys, you know, jump on the train with them and get hot for the, you know, the last few weeks of the season. And, you know, Cruz is a, uh, a player uh, as a freshman that um, sees the game uh, really, really well uh, offensively. He's very special. Uh, and from that standpoint, I think he's only going to continue to get better and, and produce more. So he's obviously been a positive. There's some voices that are associated with Badger hockey. A couple of them are sitting behind me over here, but Bob Luke is one of them too, mm -hmm. PA announcer. Players have, have talked about how hearing their name from him and just the excitement that he puts into things makes things special for them. How do you perceive that and what what's his importance been to this program since you've been yeah the same back. I'm glad you brought that up because Bob look uh, deserves some recognition for the time he's put in but also uh, the passion and enthusiasm and the you know the moments where uh, it means a lot to a player to, to hear Bob uh, night after night uh, be there for them so um, he's won the Graham so shared an award for him, for us last year for his his commitment and what he's done for our program over the years um, you know, he's in the point of where he's thinking about someday retiring at some point. Uh, that would be a sad day for us, but it'll also be a day to celebrate everything that he has done for us. Uh, so he is a, a meaningful part of our program. And I think the things you look at, um, and through the history of it, you look at Badger Bob, you look at Mark Johnson, you look at different things, you look at Mike LaCrone, you can throw Bob Look into that conversation. You know, it's a different role but he's still part of every day uh, that we're at the Cole Center or at you know whatever rink you're at with the Badger hockey. He's, he was part of it, so a very special part of our program. 